Hey, by the way, don't forget about Loki Chase. You definitely want to be doing these things in order to get the five star for Loki. But I usually save my keys until I complete both hard and normal. Now, it says a day left, and to be honest, I've, I've been slacking. But the reason I wait until both normal and hard are done is because this allows me to get these many keys, right? So whenever you're able to complete both normal and hard, or I guess until you're able to get to secret room 12, like you're able to do all the secret rooms, and then the same thing for on normal, because every time you do a secret room, you get a silver key and that stacks up. But you definitely want to be waiting to use all your keys on the hard level of the Dark Fey. I guess technically you don't have to wait until both normal and hard are finished. You could just wait until you finally reach this point hard. Or, or I guess if you can't reach hard yet, you can do the same thing for normal. But saving your keys for hard Dark Fey is just the general gist of the entire message here. Oh, I'm doing another video pretty soon talking about servers and I thought it'd be pretty fun if you guys were able to come up with like a skill set, three active skills and like a passive for Cerberus. Like the Orc Faction Unity Champion is going to be announced soon, but I thought it'd be, it's still pretty fun, right? To, to talk about the what ifs and the potentials. So in my last video, you guys were talking about how Cerberus might be a, a great doggo champion, a great dog hound champion, whatever you want to call it, to incorporate into the Raid Shadow Legends landscape and how he could, you know, uh, pair well with Shayek. But I was wondering what your guys' thoughts on that would be. Um, I thought it'd be a fun discussion to have. So yeah, uh, comment down below what you think the affinity, the rarity of, server, uh, of Cerberus would be. Do you think it would be a legendary? Do you think it would be a mythical champion? How do you think Polarium would go about doing it? Do you think it's going to be one of those champion training events? God, I would not do that. Do you think it would be a fusion? Do you think they're going to do a mythical fusion one day? Do you think it's going to be a uh, faction unity champion? Uh, I mean, that would be crazy, right? And if it is a mythical champion, what would the skills and everything look like on that end? Attack based champion? Yeah, so uh, what are your thoughts? What are your ideas? On that one that would be pretty fun to include into my next video i'll, I'll definitely uh show you showcase your guys's comments um but yeah that would be fun so please go ahead and let, let me know what you guys think about cerberus as uh, a champion coming to raid and then the other thing is somebody else mentioned the entire greek pantheon coming to raid which i also thought would be pretty cool because after asgard after the uh, the Norse gods are done with their thing in October or November, or where, where, whenever it is, the next, I guess, uh, crossover event, whatever you want to call it, could be the Greek Pantheon. Imagine it would tie in very well with Cerberus. Imagine they throw in like Ares, Hades, um, Hercules, Zeus. That would be dope, right? Um, and the reason you want to do that is because the best drop rates are here for the hard Dark Fae. And the Dark Fae gives lethal gear. If you don't know, lethal gear you fuse it, you get the um, the set. Obviously, lethal is really good because it's like an improved version of Savage Gear, which gives you crit rate on top of the 25% ignore defense. But nowadays, uh, if you have an AoE champion, Slayer is really good, might even be better than lethal and Savage. Then you have Merciless Gear. Merciless Gear is like the bumped up version of what, Reflex and Savage? So Merciless Merc Gear that you get from doing the Centranos uh, gives you the re reflex ability as well as 35%, so an improved version of Savage. So it's really important that you go out of your way for Merciless Gear if you can get it. But uh, circling back to the Dark Fate, that is why I wait until this point. Again, you don't have to wait to do normal, just until you get to this point and then start dumping all your keys into it. So at the very least, wait to do your secret rooms on hard before getting to the Dark Fae. And if you're looking for a team, this is currently the team that I'm running. It is obviously not a <laughs> pay, it's not a free, free to uh, play team. It's a, it's a pay to win team. I do have other videos talking about how to approach the Dark Fae. I've got more accessible comps. And the main point of those other videos that I show you is teaching you guys how to break down the dungeon and going about 
doing that, like learning the mechanics, the ins and outs, what's important and what you need to prioritize whenever you're building a team. But if you can do this, it's a pretty decent team. I'm pretty sure other people have faster teams than a minute 50. Um, but here are the, the presets, the stats. You can see the stats here. My nuts are in Savage and Acrisia is in Merciless, I think, or something else. Shuzen, fast, Sifi, fast. And then when you get to the boss, just, you know, copy these presets. I don't know anybody who's going to actually copy these and try to make this team, but, you know, it's there just in case you're part of that minority of people who can do it. But yeah, so you go in, make sure you don't use the skills you don't need to. Uh, Newt is going to do, or the Newts are going to do their thing. You're trying to make sure... And this part's really important. You try to make sure that when you go into the actual boss fight against Astronix, that you have all of your skills available. So as much as possible, you know, try not to use up all your skills clearing out the waves. It's it's more than enough to just use one or two of your guys' AoE moves, or if you want, just A1 through everything. And that's gonna be enough. Like the biggest thing here. Uh, you know, aside from the other biggest thing that I just said is to be okay with letting it be on auto. The other thing you don't have to worry about is wasting any keys because if you lose, you don't really waste anything. As long as it clears, you could just leave it on auto and keep running it until all your keys are, are, are done. Like This is definitely the rotation to be doing this on, but uh, to be you know saving your keys for and everything. So we speed boost, turn meter control, AOE, and we're waiting to use both AoEs here. And like I said, Siffy, a little bit too tanky, survives. But uh, Newt is going to do his thing. Now, stole the Krizia from me. Got to steal her back. And now it's just up to the Dark Fae. So with the turn meter decreases on Newt, or Newt both Newts, on his A1, we're going to be pushing the turn meter back. And then we also have Shuzen keeping turn meter uh, control up and our speed up as well and then a also has on her a3 uh, turn meter depletion and that's basically how this entire team runs sometimes rng is in our favor and we can just line everything up sometimes everybody dies right at the beginning and the dark fae takes all of those hits so we don't have to worry about trying to kill the ads and anything but here she is about to go uh, most other people Allure and Deacon combo. That's a really good combo to have. Sometimes you do Allure with Relentless. Sometimes you do Double Allure. If you can afford a Double Allure, it'd be worth it. You just need to have the right accuracy for it. Innocent, say I keep a check. She was a bad, bad, nevertheless.